All right, so today I want to introduce you to the Calico Ball Python. And if you haven't seen the Calico, it's a pretty interesting morph. Essentially what it is, is it's a morph that brings in some of the white on the sides of the snake. And depending on the line of the Calico, it can bring either more or less white up on the sides of the ball python. And if you breed it to another snake, 50% of the babies come out Calico. It is a dominant mutation. It's pretty awesome. As a matter of fact, I invested in the project about three years ago. I bought an adult female ready to breed. It was a pastel calico female. I bred Bobby with it and I got some really impressive bamboo calico combos. Probably some of the most impressive snakes in my entire collection. And it was then when I produced those, I was like, I'm definitely going to keep calico in my collection for the long haul. It is a pretty interesting gene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to the internet and I'm going to show you the potential of the calico. All right, so I'm over here on the World of Ball Pythons, and this is what a calico looks like. It is a really interesting morph. I would say once you get into calico and you see some of the results of some of the calico combos, let me tell you, you would definitely be impressed at what the calico can do. And if you actually scroll through some of these pictures, you'll see that some of them uh, are kind of like a 50% white coming up the sides of the snake. Some of them are really low white. It's kind of interesting. Take a look at this one. It almost has just like little pixelation through the sides of the snake and some of them are so subtle you can't even tell that there is calico in there it's pretty amazing I was looking through some of these pictures and some of them looked almost completely normal and you couldn't even tell uh, if I scroll up just to like for example this one you can't even hardly tell that there is calico in the snake it's pretty amazing the differences between the different lines and the other th interesting thing about calico is it's a dominant mutation. So you breed two calicos together and for some reason, I, I can't explain it, you just do not get a super calico. And I actually went over to the genetic wizard here and the world of ball pythons and, and typed in calico crossed with the calico and it doesn't say, actually you don't get any super calicos. And then I went over to Morph Market and they actually have where you can search for different genes and they actually have had a super calico but no one has actually posted a super calico for sale so it's kind of interesting that there you know as far as i know there doesn't seem to have ever been produced a super calico and the other interesting thing about this morph is there's another one that is called the sugar and a lot of people think the sugar is actually another line of calico and looking th kind of through the sugar it almost looks exactly like a calico as a matter of fact there's so many different lines of calico i would say you'd be hard pressed to differentiate the the sugar from the calico because there's so many variations of the calico itself and if you ask me it's pretty much the same gene the sugar and the calico although some people would disagree and call it a completely separate gene so what I want to do is I kind of want to scroll through some of the base morphs mixed with calico. And as a matter of fact, some of these are, I'm kind of going to be jumping forth, back and forth between the world of ball pythons and morph market. So this is the Mojave. You know, the Mojave is, there's a lot of people into Mojave. It's part of the blue-eyed leucistic. So you breed two Mojaves together. You get a completely white snake with blue eyes, which is really interesting. You mix the Mojave with calico. And this is the picture over here on the world of ball pythons you can see on this particular snake there you almost can't even see any calico in the side of the snake so what I did is I actually went over to morph market found a really extreme example of a Mojave calico and take a look at this it is like night and day the difference between these two lines of calico this is this one is you know this is probably the best calico that I, I've seen come like coming up halfway up the side of the snake. I've seen some that are really low white. And I've also seen some that are really extreme examples where it almost washes out the complete color of the snake and makes it almost a complete, uh, like a washed out snake. And I kind of like the 50-50 like this where it's coming up about 50% of the snake. 
So here's the lesser. The lesser is actually also in the blue eyed leucistic complex. You breed two lessers together, or if you breed a lesser and a Mojave together, you actually get a white snake with blue eyes. You mix the lesser with the calico, and here's another one. Over here in the world of ball pythons, just barely, you can almost not even see that there's calico in there. But over on Morph Market, I found another example. As a matter of fact, was, <laughs> I was hard pressed to actually find any example of a lesser calico that was really a prime example. And I thought this one was kind of interesting because it has white coming up the sides, but it's not really pixelated like you would expect in a lot of these calico combos. And it usually has a little more pixelation and it's the pattern's a little bit more broken up and it's usually not just a kind of like a faded white like this. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Here's the bamboo, and you know, on the snake around my neck at the beginning of every video, that is Bobby. He is a bamboo, and I produced some awesome bamboo combos. And actually, if you take a look at this, for some reason on the world of ball pythons, this is uh, probably not the best picture for a bamboo calico. Take a look at this. I actually found one over here that is a super extreme example. And this is kind of the like the line that is almost too extreme for me. I don't like it. Where where it completely washes out the whole snake, but it's amazing the difference between a really low contrast and a really high contrast. It's like, it's it almost seems like there's multiple morphs all within the calico from the low expression all the way to the high expression. And nobody really differentiates the lines. We pretty much just call them all calico. So here is the banana. The banana is uh, it's, it's a codominant morph. You can actually have a super banana. You breed the banana with something, 50% of the babies come out banana. It's one of the most impressive morphs. I have actually I have bananas and coral glows, which are essentially the same snake, just comes from two different lines. And this is the banana calico. This is a really low expression. You can see just a little bit coming through right here. And this is a super high expression banana calico. Take a look at this. It's, it almost looks like the calico is so overwhelming that it almost completely wipes out all the color from the entire snake. It's pretty impressive the difference between the two lines. So this is a pastel, I said the pastels, there's different lines of pastels. Some are really bright yellow, some are not quite as bright. Uh, you mix the pastel with the calico, and I'd say it mixes probably the best out of all the combos, the pastel calico. This is really impressive, and sometimes you can get really different variations of a theme. You start scrolling through these pictures, and it's almost hard to believe that this is just the same two genes throughout all these snakes it is it is pretty impressive so here is the pinstripe and the pinstripe is one of my favorite it's pretty much an all gold snake when they're really small hatchlings they're almost like a fluorescent gold there it's probably one of my favorite morphs mixes well with a lot of combos you mix it with the calico and here is a really low expression calico it's amazing over here on the world of ball pythons that most of these are really low expression as a matter of fact if you started kind of researching over here you might be deceived into thinking that calico doesn't really have that much of an effect on combos until you come over here on morph market and you can see you know some of these are really impressive this one is really pixelated really bright white kind of pixelation coming out of the side of the snake that is pretty impressive so Anchi, I would say Anchi is it's, it mixes really well with calico. It's Anchi essentially reduces the pattern and increases the brightness and the contrast in a lot of combos. And I would say it really excels in increasing the brightness and contrast when you mix it with calico. Take a look at this crazy snake. This is I'd say this is probably the most impressive. Uh, one of the most impressive calico combos that I've ever seen, just the two genes, it is pretty amazing. And if you kind of scroll through here, there's different variations of calico and enchi mixing together. They don't all look as extreme as this. It's pretty interesting how the, the, the snakes can change from one to the other, even with the same two genes. 
Here is Azanthic. Azanthic works really well with uh, with Calico. Azanthic is a recessive morph. It's pretty much just a black and white. Pretty much wipes out all the color of the snake. It just leaves you with black and white and grays and silvers. It is a really awesome snake. You mix it with Calico and take a look at this. This is a really crazy combo here. And actually, if you start scrolling through the pictures here, you'll see some really interesting differences. As a matter of fact, I think I like the 50% white coming up the sides of the snake the best versus the really high white or the low white. I kind of like it pretty much like a 50-50 mix in there where you can still see the, the pattern of the snake and you can actually see the Calico coming up the sides. Here's the clown. The clown mixes well with quite a few combos. I'd say it's probably the best recessive morph when it comes to combos. You mix the clown with calico and here is kind of a low expression here the clown calico i actually pulled up a really high expression over here on morph market and this one's just this one's really crazy because it has some other stuff on top but you can really see the calico kind of breaking through it's also a chimera which is kind of a genetic anomaly it also has a pastel and a yellow belly gene in there with the mix but i thought this was kind of one of the craziest clown combos with the calico so here's the core glow, essentially the same as the banana. I'm actually working with both genes. I actually just picked up some bananas this year for the first time. Uh, before this year, I was actually working mostly with the coral glows. You mix that with calico and you get a calico glow, which is kind of interesting. There's actually just one picture right here. It, I think it makes some really impressive combos with the coral glow and the banana. So here's the spider. The spider is really interesting because if you look at the spider, it almost looks like it has calico in the spider itself, although it's just part of the spider gene. It's kind of interesting. And when you mix the spider with the calico, it really enhances the calico to where you get a super reduced pattern. Take a look at this. This is really crazy. And they call this the calendar. I think this is probably hands down one of the best combos when you mix the calendar calico with the spider. And I kind of wanted to show you a few more examples. This is another example of a calico spider. This is really crazy looking snake. And you come over here, this is actually what happens when you mix the orange dream with the calico and the spider. It's pretty amazing. And then actually if you come over here on Morph Market, I sorted by all the ones that are for sale and all the ones that have sold. And you can see there's 2,333 calicos over here. So I'd say it's a really popular gene. There's a lot of people working with calico. It's pretty amazing. And as a matter of fact, I wanted to show you this picture real quick. This is actually a snake I just put a deposit on. I'm going to pick it up in about three weeks. They're actually going to ship it to me after the reptile show that I'm going to sell some hatchlings that I'm gonna use some money for my hatchlings to, to actually buy the snake. This is actually a six gene combo, a pastel, calico, banana, enchi, butter, yellow belly. It is crazy. And I started looking at the snake and it almost doesn't even look like it has calico in it, except the only interesting thing is it has like an orange coming up the side and then it kind of breaks right in the middle. And I actually contacted the guy selling the snake and he pretty much assures me that there's calico in there. And I think it's kind of getting muddied out with the six genes in there. It's kind of crazy. And I, I pretty much took his word for it because he's been breeding ball pythons for over 40 years. So I figured he's got so much experience. He pretty much knows what he's doing and he guarantees me there is calico in this snake. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Graham Biosciences asks, when I'm breeding ball pythons, do I drop the temperature at night? And that is a very good question. As a matter of fact, when I first got into ball pythons, I was researching all the temperatures, the, the ambient temperatures and the hot spots, looking on YouTube videos and on the internet. And let me tell you, everyone seems to have different temperatures for the hot spots and ambient. And a lot of people, I'd say pretty much across the board, most people actually drop the temperatures at night when they're going into the breeding season. And 
And then I kind of stumbled upon this guy who pretty much kept the same temperatures year round and had some amazing success breeding ball pythons. And that is pretty much what I did from the very beginning. I pretty much keep my hot spots at 90 degrees and my ambient temperature between 80 and 83 degrees. I say usually it's about 83 degrees here in my reptile room. And the other thing is, is on my, my, my breeder females, I actually have, a, I, I kind of went overboard. I actually have a thermostat on every single level for the hot spots at 90 degrees. So, you know, sometimes you, you'll put a thermostat on a rack and the top will be a little bit different than the bottom. I wanted every single female to be at 90 degrees for sure throughout the whole rack. And that's pretty much how I started and it's been working fantastic. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.